This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. This tutorial is going to be on button routing, sometimes called routing, but button routing, and also how to set the default button for a particular menu. So to do that, let's go over to Working Files and open up the Encore Projects and scroll down to 1002 Routing Buttons. All right, we have two menus here. You saw them before if you worked on the previous tutorial. I want to show you how to root buttons. And to see button routing, you just click on this button right there, and that shows you the routing. Now, things are kind of jammed together here and kind of covered up, but we can show you a button's routing simply by clicking on that button, and it'll turn green, and you can see the routing. This little slash through the symbol there, that's telling me that I can't change the routing here because right now, automatic button routing is turned on by default, and I'll deal with that in just a moment. So just get used to the idea of seeing that little red thing pop up now, and then don't worry about it. We'll clear that up later. So the button routing looks like this. It says that when you're on button one, and you have your remote control, and it's hovered over button one, you can see it's there because it's highlighted. You can see this little highlight there telling you that you're hovering over button number one. And you click down on your remote control, it's going to take you to button number two, as you'd expect. If you click down there, it takes you to button number three. And now if you click down on your remote control, you may think you're going to go over to button number four. That would be kind of the logical thinking, perhaps, as opposed to staying in this column. But the way the button routing is set up for this menu, you go back up to number one. How do you get over to button number four here? Well, you've got to be up on this one and click right or left to get to button number four in this particular routing case. Now, this routing is set up inside preferences to behave this way. Let me show you that. Go to Edit or Encore Preferences, then go over to Menus. And there are two button routing sections here. Routing up and down, that is along this column, for example, it says wrap within the same column. That's the default setting. In other words, when it gets to the bottom, it wraps around in the same column. You can choose to have it wrap to the next column, which might be the more logical thing, but this is the default way, and we'll just keep it default. That's okay. We don't mind having it that way. We can override it, which is what we're going to do here in a second. The other thing is routing left and right. It says wrap within the same row. In other words, if you go from here to here and root around or wrap around, it goes back to that same row. It does not go down to the next row, which could be what you want to set if you want to change it to go to the next row. But we'll keep it within the same row as the default settings, and then we're going to override it here now. So here we've got this button routing. Let's fix it. Let's make it work the more logical way. And to do that is to select the menu, not a button, but select the menu. Make sure it's active. So over here in the Properties panel, you've got this little checkbox that says Automatically Root Buttons. We'll just uncheck that. And you're no longer going to get that little No symbol as you move around. In fact, what you're going to get now is a hand telling you you can grab a hold of this stuff and move it around. So it's very simple to set routing. Let me show you how that works. We're going to go from 1 here to 2 to three, and now I want to go, when you click down here, not to go back to the number one button, but to go over to number four. It's very simple. Just click the little down arrow and drag like a pick whip right to the number four there. And it'll go, when you press down here, now it's going to root over to number four. What happens when you get to the bottom of this column? I'm thinking you probably want to go back to number one. You want to root around to number one. So I'm going to click on this little thing pointing down here and drag it over to number one to say that's the way I want it to go. So I go down like this, it's going to go over here. Go down like this, it goes back. What happens when I go up? I go from 6 to 5 to 4, and then it goes back to 6. So I don't want to do that. When I get up to number 4 here, I want to go up farther. I want to go down to number 3. That's kind of logical, right? So I'm going to take 6 here and drag it over to number 3. And when I get to the top of this one, I go 3, 2, 1. When I go up here, I want to go from 1 to the end, 1 to 6. So I take this number 3 and drag it down here to number 6. So now the routing goes down, 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 over to here, down, 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 back to the top. Or if I go up, 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 then it goes down over to here, up, 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 down like that. And left and right stays the same, I think. If you go from this to the right, you go there. If you go right here, it takes you to that guy there. We could have it go right down a row. That might be logical, but we'll just keep these guys parallel like that. So to see this in action, let's preview this from here. Just right click, let's say preview from here. And here it is the menu. Now, if I hover my cursor over here, the little highlights, the little sub-picture highlights just bounce around as I move my cursor around. So this doesn't give you a true indication of the routing because you can hover over it with this guy rather than use the controls. But this guy mimics your remote control. So right now I'm on chapter three there. If I click down, what should happen? It should go to four, right? So I'll go down, 
boom, it goes to four. See the little highlight jump over to four? If I click up, where should it go? Should it go back to three? And it does. Go up, up. Now I'm on chapter one. If I click up again, it should drop over to the lower right corner down to six, chapter six. And lo and behold, it does. And if I go up, up, go from four to three. If I go back down again, go down, down. If I click down one more time, it goes to chapter one. So the routing works the way we just set it up to work. Let me exit here. Going over to the scene selection menu is a little more complicated because it has this previous and next and main menu button. So I'm going to click on the routing buttons display. And you're going to see that this is just a little convoluted because of the preferences. When you click down here, it goes to two, which makes sense. It goes from one to two. You click down here, you think logically it would go to three, but it doesn't. It drops down to the main menu button. So that's a problem. Same thing here. Click down, it goes to seven again. Just kind of strange, I think. We want this guy to go down to the next, down to the next, down to the next. We go down here. We do want to go to five because this button here is the next menu. So like if you're going to the scene after this one, you want to go to the next menu. That makes sense. And if you want to go left here, let's say, you probably want to go to this guy to the previous menu. So that makes sense too. So let's make a couple of changes here. And again, this is just my way of thinking about this particular menu. You can do your routing any way you please. So I need to switch off the automatically route buttons checkbox. So I make sure the menu is active. Go to the menu properties panel and uncheck this guy over there. Now these guys are ready to be fixed. When we go down here, we don't want to go to seven. When we go down, we want to go over to number three. So I just click this guy or click on this and drag it to number three. There we go. Now it says three. When I click down over here, I want to go to four. Yep, there you go. So I think now we're making some sense. When I click five here, I do want to go down to the next button. So that makes sense. When I click this one to the right. If I want to go to the right out of this one, I probably want to go to the main menu button rather than go to the previous button. So I'm going to go over here and drag this to the main menu button. When I click this thing left, I probably don't want to go to button number two. That's just weird. If I click this thing left, I probably want to go, let's say, to button number one to start over again. So I drag this to button number one like that. If I click this thing down, I probably want to go to six. That makes sense. Click it up, probably want to go to five. That also makes some sense. So we'll leave it like this. I mean, there are some other things we could do here to fix this up, but I think you get a sense of how this all works. So let's just test it out. I'm going to right click again and go to preview from here. And now I'm going to use this little button control over here. If I go right, we should go to scene two. See the highlight right there? If I go right, we should go scene two. Right, go scene three. Right, go scene four. Now I'm done with scene four. I want to go to the next scene, which would be the next menu. So it should go down to the next button over here. There it's highlighted. See that? And if I want to go right out of that button, hmm, where do I want to go? Probably to the main menu. Very good. We highlight the main menu. So you can see how the routing works there in action here in this preview. So I'll exit out of there. Finally, you want to set the default button for a menu. The default button is where you go, let's say, when a timeline ends. You need to tell the timeline what to do when it gets to the end. Otherwise, it'll just stop and nothing will happen. You're going to have, let's say, just a pause. You have a black screen on your DVD or your Blu-ray. So you need to define what the end action is for a timeline, typically. And the end action, typically, is to go to a menu. And when you go to a menu, you can specify which button you want to have highlighted. It's no big deal, but you can say, I want to have the third button down highlighted because the thing I just clicked on prior to this time was the second button. So you want the next button highlighted. But if you don't specify it, when you just want to go back to the menu, you will then display or highlight the default button. It's just displayed. It's not actually clicked on or activated in some way. It just sits there with a highlight on it to say, this is the one that's highlighted. If you click on your remote control, this is the one that's going to be activated and take you someplace. No big deal, but you can specify which button will be highlighted if you say, just go to the menu. So if you click on the menu, you're going to say, which is the default button? And the default button is always button number one. And you can see which button is number one by clicking on this routing. And there it says that the upper left-hand corner is number one, which is what you'd expect. If you're not sure of a button number, if you don't have this thing turned on, you click on one like that, you can see the button number over here. So I click on this one, it's button number one. Go back to the menu. So the default button is number one. If I want to change that, I can just do this drop down list here and change to a different button to be the default button. And lots of times the main menu would be the default button. Sometimes in a scene selection menu like this, when they come back to this menu, you probably want to have this thing highlighted so people go, okay, I'll just click on that and go back to the main menu. So if I change that, now the main menu will be the default. If I click on it, you'll see that it is number seven. And if I go over to the menu here, the default button is number seven. So that's how you set the default button. 
So button routing and setting the default button may just seem a little tedious, but it gives you all this control over how your DVD, your Blu-ray disc, or your Flash project is going to behave. And that's one of the great advantages of Encore. It doesn't do things for you automatically. A product like this shouldn't just hold your hand and take care of things for you automatically. It should expect input from you. And so this is your opportunity to root buttons the way you want to root them and make sure you have the default button set the way you want it to be set.